the fishing, farming, tourism landscape of Orkney feels unchanged. But come with us, scratch the surface. Something of a revolution is happening here. Pioneers making the mistakes, seizing the successes. A green revolution. Orkney produces considerably more renewable electricity than it needs. A housing estate that could be found anywhere between here and Cornwall. Except the owner of this house regularly invites neighbours to charge their cars up for free. You have an engineering background, John. Right? No, no, just just a geek. Really? <laughs> His monthly energy bill? I spent fifteen pounds. One five. Yeah, oh. but that included around about fifteen hundred miles for my two electric vehicles. Jonathan Porterfield with more clean energy than he can handle. This app is telling me I'm producing 100% electricity. A little bit goes back to the grid. The key, linking his conventional solar panels to this. Tucked in the hall cupboard, the domestic battery. With batteries, they can use the energy that they've made in the day during the night when they're getting home. So for everyone who's got solar, batteries are a real no-brainer. Sure, he's laid out around £15,000 for this, but recouped it all in three and a half years. So this is where I get my hot water from. It's a, a heat battery. The principle is it's a chemical reaction, phase change materials, a bit like a hand warmer. So you activate the tab, as you can see, it goes white and goes hard and gets really, really hot. So they've scaled that up inside that big white box as yes. a boiler? Yes, basically. And I've got around about 400 litres of hot water available at any time. From micro to macro, the island of Edi, scarred by the derelict farms of depopulation, barely a hundred or so people now inhabit this wild, empty landscape. But it's the unlikely home to a major experiment for years, they've been trying to crack using hydrogen for vehicles to replace polluting petrol and diesel. This is our hydrogen station where we're actually making hydrogen from electricity. Their uh, verdict, it's complicated. We went off on that journey at the start. A few years ago, we worked with a company that was putting hydrogen fuel cells into uh, small vans. And at the time, the range on a van was 30, 40, 50 miles. And so the hydrogen doubled that. But now you can buy an electric van, would have a range three or four times that. So the batteries have come on so fast in those years that hydrogen doesn't really have a space in that as far as we can see. So their solution, using green electricity from this tide turbine moored just offshore from the island, then use that electricity onshore to make hydrogen by mixing it with carbon taken from the atmosphere to make a hydrocarbon, synthetic petrol and diesel. The issue is if we can take the carbon out of the atmosphere and borrow it, attach it to, to hydrogen, and then when you've finished burning the fuel, it just goes back to where you got it from, you've not added to the total carbon. If we take carbon out of oil, we're burning it, we're adding more and more and more carbon, and that's the problem we've got at the moment. Don't keep adding to the problem. When you're in a hole, stop digging. The plan, scale up this operation by a factor of 10 to meet possible demand. The challenge is, do we want to use absolutely zero carbon fuels? Well, we don't think we do, but the carbon's got to not be fossil carbon. If it's natural carbon or carbon that's taken out of the atmosphere, you're not making the problem any worse. It's niche, but the niche market could still be massive. So electrify your cars, electrify your buses, electrify your trains, electrify whatever you can. Central heating. Uh, yes, and the stuff that's really hard, like flying or big ships, that we think is going to have to use a synthetic fuel. And it's going to be more expensive. It is going to be more expensive, certainly in the short term, until we've got so much renewables we don't know what to do with. Close by, at Edie's airstrip, another experiment and possible market for that cleaner fuel commercial delivery drones. The aircraft itself obviously doesn't need a cockpit so it's a bit more aerodynamic. The fuselage is built so that it generates lift so the whole thing is a wing essentially. We know that these engines are more efficient and, and to be carrying that kind of load. This one can take 100 kilograms to several sites over a wide area, ideal for widely spaced island communities. So local communities being able to ship between the islands because at the moment that logistics network just isn't there for that day-to-day -day delivery. There isn't that order on Amazon, next day delivery between these islands. It doesn't so happen. It doesn't happen, no, but the aim is that we try and make it happen. And they're not the only players. In recent days, Amazon themselves have been cleared by the Civil Aviation Authority to test delivery drones at Kirkwall, Orkney's main airport. 
So household geeks through hydrogen pioneers to drone developers, lessons and learnings from Orkney for the more populous areas of Britain as we decarbonise our energy.